Today, we're gonna try to exfil in the most popular extraction shooters. All right, come no, back. From PCs to consoles, all the way to mobile and VR. To make it even more difficult, I won't be playing with any friends, mainly because I don't have any friends. I'll be dropping in solo or with randos, which as you may already know, it goes really well. I'm coming up. Welcome. I am. Oh my God. <laughs> Ghost of Tabor is the first extraction shooter to go to VR. Before making this video, I didn't realize how popular it actually was. During its beta, it had over 500,000 players. The only reason I didn't try it myself is because I didn't have a VR headset. The last month, I finally went out and bought myself a MetaQuest 2, and hopping into Tabor for the first time made me feel like a 75-year-old man trying to send a text on an iPhone. I feel like I'm, I'm losing my virginity all over again. Where, where does this go? Within the first few minutes, I met a squad of 13 year olds. But hold on, hold on. This is my first ever match in this game. I really don't know what I'm doing. I have no weapon. Are you guys friendly? I've never played Are this game. Friendly? This is my first match, my guy. You've been shot in the arm. I, Do you know nice. how the water don't, don't touch me, don't touch me. No. Oh, the um the red thing around is your health. The wa um the water, blue thing is your water. Uh, health thing. The uh, green thing is your Don't go home. Don't go home. Do what's that guy doing? Wait, what's that guy doing? Uh, that's our teammate. Um, I don't. I, I don't uh, like uh, it. By the way, don't trust anyone. All right. Come no. Back. Of course. I could say that little Jimothy was just being toxic, but that's just the way she goes in random encounters and extraction games. I did the same thing in one of the games I play later. But in this genre, there's also balance. What's he doing? What does that mean? Yes. Hi. H hello. Nope. How do, how do you put the whole... I'm in a chair? <laughs> this is so awkward. Hold on. And then you put it on your back? Like that? Okay. 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 Did you just put it in my holster? You're a G. Thanks, man. Okay. See the house over there? Uh, no. There's something called border. And you can actually go there. A young man, a few words, he left the game after that, leaving me to fend for myself. And I shot myself in the hand. I shot my own hand! Now, with a better understanding of the game's mechanics, in my next raid, I was dead set on getting to an exfil with a full backpack. What? Jesus? Ooh! Thank the Lord! Go in there. Oh my god. After some trial and error, I eventually got pretty good at the ladder. <laughs> it's all in the wrist. Thank you, Jesus. Let him pass. I quickly found a gun and was able to get my first kill. One moment, please. Thank you for being so patient. <laughs> I killed a guy! Where's your gun, dude? Ah, there's the goods. Got him. Nice. Still gotta find an exfil. Like having trouble breathing, dude. After a successful raid with a couple kills, a semi-full backpack of loot, and two new weapons, I finally had this game figured out. Fuck. <gasps> Before we continue, did you know the median salary for back-end devs in the United States in 2023 was over $100,000? Yeah. Me neither. Before, you would have to go to a university to learn to code. But now, Boot.dev, the sponsor of today's video, has created an engaging way to give you the skills that you need to learn back-end web development from start to finish in the Python and Go programming languages in the form of an online, self-paced, captivating RPG experience. Because the folks at Boot.dev believe the smartest way to learn to code is to make sure that you're never bored. The platform is designed to get you writing a ton of code, because getting your hands on the keyboard and actually shipping projects is the only way to really learn. I've seen 
many of you in my community saying they'd love to work from home, and programmers often have the option to work remotely while making some pretty good money doing it. Click the link in the description box and use my code PLAYER2 to get 25% off your first payment for boot.dev. That's 25% off your first month or your first year depending on the subscription you choose. Okay, not gonna lie. I went into Arena Breakout with lower expectations than I have any time they do a TV adaptation of one of my favorite games. Not this one. This show is f***ing fantastic. But everybody that's played it said Arena Breakout is Tarkov on mobile. And they, they were right. Almost too right. Oh my god, it's exactly like Tarkov. Except they actually tell you what to do. With a surprising amount of depth, I admit, it's pretty impressive for a free download on the Apple Store. So I joined their Discord and hopped in general chat, which might have been a mistake. A short moment of silence is all that I got. Before 13-year-olds from all over the world wanted to play with the new guy. What's up, Halo? Join? Hold on. Hold on. We're waiting, we're waiting. Wait all right, thank you so much. Wait, wait hold on, hold on. We've been holding on. Pretty soon it felt like a 2009 Call of Duty match lobby. Thing that happened between us before. You sent me to a group chat and it was furries and then it led to other things. Oh yeah, the yeah. part that I was a furry. I forgot I told you that. Can we can we start the match? Instead of using on-screen buttons, I had a Game Sir GA mobile controller lying around that I'd never used until now. After some of the encounters I had, I think using a controller in this game is an overpowered advantage. Coming up the stairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo. Oh, oh. I'm gonna lay you out. Got him. Oh, my life. I didn't die once or come even close to it. And I killed multiple players per raid. I don't know. He's a dirty oh, knifer. He might have ran out of ammo. After successfully X filling, I found an entire progression system with a stash crafting, upgrades, and so much to do with the loot that you extract. And it really does have some upper echelon of human players. Sorry, I'm doing graffiti. Oh. No, I'm graffiti This is where it all began. Escape from Tarkov is the rubric for basically every game in the genre and the root of many players' trust issues. Okay, I'm coming. Are you on the second floor? No, I'm on third. I'm coming up. Welcome. I am. Oh my God! <laughs> Tarkov was actually a happy little accident. Originally intended to be a much more stalker-like hardcore survival game, but due to development restrictions, they had to settle for a session-based gameplay loop where if you die in one of these sessions, you lose everything. And trying to play this game as a newcomer, I lost everything a lot. It was here that the high risk for high reward extraction shooter subgenre was born. And there's no other game on this list with as much that you have to consider to stay alive. So let me get this straight. You're telling me if I wear this tanker helmet right here that I will literally hear nothing? Muffled. Why the f would anybody wear this? I'd never really even given it the old college try until this latest update where I set aside some time to finally dive in. My first raid, I loaded into the new beginner friendly map with one objective, survive. Okay, so right now I have Google pulled up on a second monitor to find the exfil locations because because there's no map. Where the hell did he go? What the f is shooting at me? That's a player. <laughs> Woo! I'm gonna die now, probably. <laughs> With multiple open wounds and on the verge of bleeding out, I tried to pull up my expo points, but the amount of time that it took me to triangulate where exactly those locations were left me with no blood left. He just gave up? Since I failed my objective to survive in my first raid, I went with an approach I knew would work for my second, the way of the rat. Now, I, I hear gunshots. Instinctually, I want to rush towards them, but that is not the way of the rat. Footsteps. Come to me. not die well hello there ooh it's like candy ooh I like this guy's gun how 
is he not dead yet? That's it for that. Got him. Oh, sh At this point, I came to understand the survival aspect of the game. I hadn't eaten in a while, putting me on the verge of blacking out uh, again. Oh, this sucks, dude. Heal? Does that work? Can I just heal the whole way there? Oh my god, I don't think I'm gonna make it. <clears throat> Yo, that was close. After my first successful exfil, I started knocking out quests pretty quickly, resulting in leveling up. This really didn't even scratch the surface. There's so much to do in this game, it would be impossible to explore everything EFT has to offer in such a short time frame. Because Tarkov is only the beginning. This next game was purely a reaction to EFT's popularity, trying to capitalize and monetize off of the breakout subgenre. I am happy to announce DMZ, Call of Duty's extraction mode. <sighs> Call of Duty's DMZ mode had so much hype for it leading up to launch. For almost a year, I played and streamed this game religiously, as well as competed with my teammates Covent and Iceman Isaac to take third place in the DMZ gauntlet. But slowly, I began to lose interest in this mode, and apparently so did the devs. Last year, it was announced that the DMZ servers would stay up, but no new updates would be added. Since then, I haven't kept up with it. But today, I re-downloaded to explore what's become of DMZ. After 15 minutes of trying to find DMZ mode, I joined a match with the squad Phil ticked on and was introduced to the most wholesome teammate, Godly Sin King. I, I broke my hand a couple, uh, like a week and some change ago. That's when I stopped playing DayZ. <laughs> and What'd I you do, smash them, so. some drywall? Uh, a little worse than that. <laughs> my intention was to get into some PvP action on my first raid back, but for whatever reason, Sen King decided to jump directly into the middle of the heaviest PvE area on the map. I got you, I got you. Keep moving, keep moving. I'm oh going, no. I'm going, I'm going. Even though he put me in this bad situation, he did have some good ideas. That inflatable sh uh, it, it actually does distract him. Oh, ah, okay. Now you got inflatable sex doll. <laughs> Except he's in the. Oh. <laughs> Kinky. After snagging his riot shield, I was able to get enough cover to pick him up. Now, with no time left and the radiation beginning to spread, he told me about a new bug that we could use to secretly exfil. When it goes black, you have to restart your whole game. Like, press your home button and then put a quick game. My initial thought was this is just the console version of Alt F4, and I'd lose everything after logging back in. But he was pretty adamant that it was legit. I might have to kill you if you say something. After we got to the Koshi Complex entrance, the screen went black as we loaded in, and I exited the game and tried to reopen it. To my surprise, I had a pending friend request from Sen King. After accepting, he sent me an invite. He told me all my loot from the raid would still be on my character, and it was. So I decided to run one more with him. This raid was much more tense. I was texting my aunt, and then my ex thought I was on other girl while I'm texting it, like right next to her. And she fucking stabbed my leg and fucking walked. You got stabbed with a fort because she thought you were cheating with your aunt? Yeah. I still had his riot shield from the last raid, so he agreed to trade for his best sniper. That is a long <laughs> rifle. Here's your riot shield. The match was pretty quiet until an enemy squad put a UAV up near our location. Yeah, Ooh, figured. I'm going in. Yeah. All right. Player. Yep. Downed one. After first blood, we searched around for the rest of his squad and couldn't find them. At this point, we realized we needed to start heading towards an exfil. We arrived at the parking garage only for it to be swallowed up by the radiation, so the only option was the final exfil, where everyone remaining in the match would be headed. Is this the final? Yeah, this is the final. We'll definitely probably yeah, see players here. You good? Let me pick you up, bro. Seconds. Yep, coming to you. Keep moving, knowledge. Keep moving. Ooh, there's so many. Somebody's mortar striking. No. Coming, 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 coming. Go, 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 go. Oh my god, dude. Yes. Though we had a successful exfil, we left a good man behind that didn't speak the entire game. No. 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 Until now. Damn, I just, I'm I'm you did it, bro. I'm still fighting. 
Since the start of 2024, Rainbow Six Siege has seen a massive resurgence, hitting over 200,000 players on Steam nine years after its launch. Extraction, on the other hand, had almost 3 million players when it released in 2022, touting a new way to experience Rainbow Six in a tense PvE co-op mode, where you go on incursions with up to three players in contaminated zones, overrun with alien enemies, and complete objectives to upgrade your character's abilities and weapons. But with no updates over the last two years, other than the addition of an extra operator, the player count is almost non-existent. So I wanted to see why. What's up, baby? What's up, cutie? How you doing? I don't understand what I'm doing. Bro, me and you both, bro. This is like my second game, third game. Everyone I squatted up with had the same story. Just gotta press every game. And the player count had to be low because I got squatted up with Baby Zeus several times. Yo, what's up, my guy? We're like the only people playing this right now. The incursion we went on took us through three objectives in a post-apocalyptic New York City high-rise. Our first goal was to find this NPC and save them from becoming alien lunch by getting them to an extraction pod. All right, now we mm -hmm. go to that gate that you was just at. The next objective was to activate three science stations around the map. This is where I learned how important it is to conserve ammo. Oh, I just got murked. We'll get you. Yo, you got cocooned. Yeah, you gotta put me in the extraction too. Um. Uh oh. At any point in the mission, you can head straight to an extraction if you don't think you'll complete the next objective and want to at least get out with the progress you've made so far. If you go down and get cocooned, I guess, the only way for you to successfully exfil is if one of your teammates carries you to a pod. No, I got no ammo. Yeah, Here, I'll, I'll get him. We got, you gotta watch my bag, guy. When we got to the pod, our other guy went down, leaving only me with no ammo and five health. You gotta clutch it, bro. Okay, how can I do this? What does this do? Oh, uh, that's just to detect them, bro. It does, oh, it does nothing. nothing. Get him before he dies, though. No! <laughs> I guess I'll just take another dab, bro. <laughs> can I put him in this thing? No, save your lugs, bro. I'm getting us out of here. Now that I had saved the strong and silent faint foal and Snoop Dogg, I found out I could also use the pod to extract. Well, we got out with something, dude. Yeah, it says extraction fucking successful. I mean, there was no other choice, bro. So from my playthrough experience and what my teammates were saying, it seems as though with no PvP, the game just didn't have enough action to keep players engaged long term. But that doesn't mean PvE only doesn't work in extraction style gameplay loops. Some of the games on this list just do it right. Helldivers 2 is just the vibe. The atmosphere, the irreverence for your fellow soldiers' well-being when calling an air support. <laughs> you killed him! Yeah. Gunning down swarms of automatons and bugs. God damn bugs! I may have gotten a little carried away. This will easily be one of the best games of 2024, but hopping in for the first time this late after launch, I was worried that I wouldn't be taken seriously. I saw a tweet recently that said Helldiver 2 players are kicking teammates who don't have meta loadouts. So I wanted to see if this was true. So this is my first, I haven't dropped in yet. This is like my first time playing the game. Yeah. So I, we're, we're good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, watching this back, I noticed something that I hadn't when I was playing, and, and now I feel bad. Black Ties was holding out for a hug the whole time that Nepsis was explaining the game to me. I believe now that he wanted a hug from every member of our squad. Lord Shippu gave him one, then Nepsis as soon as he spawned in, but he just stood there in front of me, and I completely ignored him and went to the terminal. A few minutes later, I get off, and he's still standing there. That is no way to treat a fellow brother of democracy. Black Ties, when I see you again, I'll dap you up. Right after landing from my first mission to terminate an illegal broadcast, it was ended by Black Ties, who just shot rockets at it from our spawn point. So it was mission complete and back up to the ship. Then Nepsis told me he wanted to take me to somewhere special. Mavalon Creek, the planet on this game. <laughs> well, you're gonna experience it first time. Get ready to get you to your ass right over. Oh, shit, okay. Let's go hard. Should be uh, fine. And so, Jobin, Nepsis and I, shot down to the surface with an objective to verify an ore vein location. Is that an ATST from Star Wars? Oh my god, he's still coming! You have no arms, sir! <laughs> if we ever make it back to Super Earth, Jobin, I'm gonna name my son after you. <laughs> my wife always told me she wanted a traditional name. 
Jobin is traditional, but... Oh, for sure. I know like seven different Jobins. To call in a prospecting drill at the Vein location, I had to use a stratagem. This is honestly one of the most unique features I've seen in a modern game. To use all your special abilities, you have to open the stratagem menu, then press a sequence of keys to actively call in a drop. It vaguely reminds me of trying to perform fatalities in Mortal Kombat when I was a kid. The drill itself also has its own set of mini games that I had to complete to get it to run. Some of them I was too dumb to figure out. What do I even do with this? Please confirm match. What? Uh... This is the last one. With the mission complete, I called in for our extraction. Oh, wait! <laughs> extraction complete. Pelican 1 beginning ascent. Job well done, boys. Whoo! I gotta take a shot. Vigor is a third-person extraction shooter released by Bohemia Interactive back in 2019. This was the team behind DayZ and the Arma series, but similar to Arena Breakout, I had my reservations about playing, because I knew there would be no way to avoid third-person corner peeking. Dude, where the f*** was he? But with patience and a little bit of luck, my first raid went the best it probably could have gone. That put me at level four, I was level one. After using my new player rewards to build a high level sniper, I was placed at the top side of a mountain. Wait, are we near anything? What's the airdrop area? Well, that could be fun. On my way down the mountain, I heard several gunshots coming from a bed and breakfast. I decided to get a scan of the area from a vantage point, and it's a good thing I did. After missing the shot, I just became one with the plant for a couple minutes. And then, surprisingly, he went back to try and loot the same spot. This time, I didn't want to let him get away. How many times can I miss? Got him. I slowly made my way down to loot the body, and on him I found an AR, an alarm trap, and some fuel. The POI nearest to me at this point was the comms tower, so I decided to go check it out. Accessing the radio inside allowed me to place a booby trap on the airdrop that would help me slow down anybody that made it there before me, or hopefully just kill them. Bigger didn't have proximity chat, or even squad voice chat, a feature I feel like is almost a necessity in this genre because of the unique encounters that you can have with other players. I mean, even Arena Breakout had voice chat. Granted, I couldn't figure it out, but it's there. This means everyone that I come across would be kill on sight. Oh, there's the airdrop. Has been marked as a threat. What is that? Try to avoid Must be like going rogue in the division. A booby trap. Headshot, baby. <laughs> I took out the threat and I get his airdrop. Oh my god, Joe Butters 99 had a lot of loot, but I didn't realize similar to DMZ, there was a radiation zone that would expand at the end of each match. Additionally, while in possession of airdrop loot, my location would be revealed to everyone on the map. So that's good. Oh my god, we gotta move. Go, 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 go. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. I couldn't find one of the marked X fills. The symbol is so big and you have to be in just the right spot to make it out. This ain't it. Where's it at? But then finally, with maybe a few seconds left on my health bar, I found it. Oh my God, no way. Look at that. Heavy baggage, you're damn right. You got out some goodies. In the extraction shooter conversation after Escape from Tarkov, Hunt Showdown is usually the next game mentioned. Six years after its launch, it's still holding some seriously high player counts. The dark 1890s monster infested Louisiana swamp atmosphere makes for some wild PvEVP encounters. Got him! Oh, oh no! We had a buddy! Why are I they all running around with damn. knives? 12 players and teams of up to three enter a raid in the bayou with the goal of hunting down undead bosses and extracting with their bounty to turn in for rewards to upgrade your weapons and gear. But I was told before playing that hunt giveth and hunt taketh, which is misleading. In my playthrough, hunt mostly just taketh. Oh! All right, I'm gonna rush him. Oh! 
Oh my God, no, I'm stuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But I learned all you need is a good teammate that's willing to teach you how to hunt. A teammate like pussy fingers. To find the bosses, you have to locate different clues around the map. With each one, their general location will slowly be revealed. And it took me a while to figure out that birds, dogs, and dying horses around the map are set up by the game to alert other players of your location. I ran into these almost every time. Oh my god. Another thing I didn't realize before playing is how much praise this dev team gets for the in-game sound effects. With a heavy focus on binaural audio, this is one of the best games for detecting where other players are and what weapons they're using by just listening. Uh, we just got shot at. Yeah. Oh, I heard that. Yeah, anyway, bow. Can't see him now. He's dead. He's dead. I got him. He's got him. You're going to have to come out, boy. I'm going to smoke you out, sir. Yeah, bye, you bandit boys are here, son. Got him. Got him. Dead. Nice Get kill, dead. man. You also have to worry about players resurrecting from the dead, apparently. Yo! He's alive! Got you, baby. But the Bayou boys were ready for action. Our next raid fingers came in with the katana. Are you like a samurai or something? What is this? Yeah, dude. Check me out, bro. And in this hunt... I finally started getting the hang of the combat. Coming to you. Got him. There's one oh, more. yep. Where? Oh! Fingers was able to kill him after I went down, but there was another team that was third partying us in this fight, and they had dipped off to head to Xville. At least that's what we thought. But they're probably going to run to extract. I say, I say we go for the butcher. Hold on, there's one guy staying. Hold on, why is one guy staying and one guy going to one church? Oh yeah, I see him. Hit. Oh, I missed him! No way he zigzagged that. I see him. Got him! There you go. Let's go! I think that was a headshot. All right, you boys are back in action. Let's go, dude. Yeah, you loot, and then I'll loot, and then we gotta find something to burn them with. In Hunt, you burn the bodies of down players so they can't revive. But his teammate didn't want to let that happen. This bounty. Oh. Shot. Yeah, it's his little buddy. Oh, headshot. He got me. Fingers had a perk equipped called Necromancer, I think. That allowed him to revive me from up to 25 meters away. Oh, he died. The player ended up getting killed by the boss, giving us a chance to take its bounty before other players showed up. Oh, shit. Watch out for that. Player behind you. I just did a scan. Oh, he might have necro. I always forget about that. Got him. <laughs> hunt giveth and hunt taketh. Oh, oh no! We had a buddy. Why are I they all running around with knives? As basically the replacement mode for DMZ, Modern Warfare 3 Zombie Mode is the most expensive game we're playing today. If you are specifically trying to play a new extraction shooter, I would not recommend paying $70 just for zombies. But that's why we're here. I'm doing it, so you don't have to. As a fan of OG Nazi zombies, staying up all night to beat the World of War campaign back in 2008, just to unlock Nocturne Toten, I was a little intrigued to see how they mashed it up with the DMZ extraction style. But I couldn't justify dropping that much money just to play one mode. The multiplayer and Warzone just aren't for me. And I already played the campaign 13 years ago. Within the first five minutes in game, it became obvious to me that this mode really can be just summed up to DMZ with zombies and no PvP. The contracts are fairly easy and the zombies die quickly, so there really was no threat or challenge until I made one for myself at the end. Oh my God! But also obvious within the first five minutes was why people play co-op games like this in the first place. Matchmaking dropped me in with Moto and DM. What's up, Moto? DM, how you guys doing? Who both gave me the most wholesome and nostalgic experience that I've had in our journey so far. Dude, I, to be honest, I haven't played zombies since maybe Black Ops 2. Yo, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 2 is the best. Insta-kill. Yeah. Insta-kill means uh, you get one-shot kills. Oh yeah, that's, that's uh, standard zombies. I was a bit perplexed because I hadn't had somebody explain what insta-kill was to me in like 20 years. What I didn't know was this was DM's first COD Zombies game. Because I'm new to Call of Duty, I thought that I, I thought all this stuff was new. Then it was like, no, we've been playing zombies. And I was like, wait, what? Uh, player, how old were you when uh, World at War released? Uh, I think World of War came out in like maybe 2007. 
it's like eighth grade so like 13 14 probably that was like my years i mean that's where that's, that's zombies we, we were all playing so i was uh i was three years old when i played zombies for my first time oh and, wow uh, I was playing World at War, and it was after my dad finished the campaign. He's like, here, take the controller. I have, I had no idea what I was doing. I have basically the same story with my dad, except my, my dad was playing Ocarina of Time. It was Legend of Zelda on Nintendo 64. But yeah, I mean, you know, World at War was probably one of the biggest games. I mean, everybody I know got into Call of Duty for Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the first one. That and Halo 3, we were everybody I knew was on that. They were just different. It's pre-cosmetics, pre pre-monetization models and stuff. That's when DM chimed in. And I found out why he'd never played a Call of Duty game. In 06 and 07, that's when I got sucked into World of Warcraft. Like vanilla World of Warcraft, and I played that for years. Yeah, and a lot of the kids in my school were playing uh, RuneScape, and then my buddy came home one yep. day and was like, dude, have you heard of this game, World of Warcraft? I'm like, no. He's like, it's way better. But now, while I love this model of it just being kind of like a fun, goofy version of Call of yeah. Duty, because I mean, that's what it really is. Back when it was like World of War, it just took itself so much more seriously. You know, like, remember the clips in between cutscenes that were real and shit, like executions? Real parts of war, and the music Dude, was like, just no, really like, creepy. Yeah. yeah. Campaigns. Call of Duty was like actually Call of Duty, though. My man. You're after my heart. We talked for a bit explaining to DM how good the old COD campaigns and zombies were. And by the time that we needed to exfil, I realized that there, there's all these gamers out there that just enjoy conversating about games, sharing a nostalgia, and just feeling heard by players who share the same hobby with the gameplay of zombies or whatever in the background. Extraction shooter players are no different. They're not all TTV Giga Chad sweat lords with teeth that look like creek gravel and a faint scent of Amalsabaros. They have hopes and dreams, just like normal people. There's also way more games in this little subgenre than I'd originally anticipated that are playable right now, with several that I've never even heard of, and I bet you haven't either. So consider subscribing to join us as we dive deeper into this series and play all of them. As soon as part two is finished, it'll be right here, so we can go and have new and wholesome encounters with other friendly people. Oh, f me. Smoke, buddy.